Welcome back. My name is Simon Pagnini and continue on the presentation of the DP block diagram. In this lecture, I focus on the thruster and how it interferes with the DP system. In the last movie, I explained how the wind force are being calculated and feed forward to the actuator. The actuator first job is the thruster allocation. There, the force demand in the three axes surge, sway and yaw is coming in. The system knows where the thrusters are and if they are on or not and which are enabled. Further, it also knows which mode, uh, thruster modes are in. The thruster modes we will discuss later. Using this information, the force are turned into thruster commands like RPM, pitch, azimut angle, load, etc. for each thruster. The demand is distributed in such a way as to obtain the directional force and rotational moment required uh, for position and heading control, while also ensuring optimum thruster use within minimum power consumption and minimum wear and tear on the propulsion equipment. If it's not possible to maintain both the rotational moment and the directional force demand due to insufficient available thrust, a priority is normally set to obtain rota a rotational moment demand, which is the heading. If required, you will request your manufacturer that the prior priority is changed to the maintain position rather than heading. If a thrust is out of service or deselected, the lost thrust is automatically uh, redistributed to the remaining thrusters. From the thruster allocation, some thruster settings are not favorable because thrusts are being lost, while the DP system is not aware of it. For example, due to friction along the hull, you have thruster hull interaction, or when one thruster flushing his propeller wash into another called thruster-thruster interaction. These factors can give rise to error in thrust up to 40% in directional alteration and up to 25 degrees. Azimuting thrusters are particularly vulnerable to interactions. One way to avoid uh, the interaction problem is to specify a forbidden zones where the thrust wake is not allowed. This technique is useful but not a total answer as from time to time the thrusters will have to cross the zone and cause a temporary disturbance. To avoid this situation, the DPO uh, can use different thruster modes like bias where thrusters are placed opposite to each other and some thrusts applied against each other this can be inwards or outwards. Then the fixed mode can be used to set thruster on a fixed angle. The push-pull mode can be used if the vessel has two propellers and rudders. In push-pull mode, one propeller only runs ahead and the other is allowed to uh, run astern. The rudder behind the ahead propeller is used to create side force. To compensate for surge and sway in tons, it's easy. Uh, for the heading, so-called yaw axis looks a bit different because it's a moment. The rotation point is a distance away from the thruster, multiplied with the thruster force acting 90 degrees on the angle on the moment in tons per meter. Let's say the thruster force is 2 tons and the distance is 8 meters. We have a momentum of 16 tons per meter. If the thrusters are not acting 90 degrees angle, then the 90 degree angle vector needs to be calculated. Let's say the same force and distance, but thrust is 40 degrees off because we are using now an azimuth thruster which can direct the thrust in any direction. So then the formula would be momentum is equal to distance multiplied by thruster force multiplied by sinus of the thruster angle. 
In our example, with the same distance, same thrust, but 40 degree thrust angle instead of 90, we got only 10 tons per meter. Uh, and that's how the thrust allocation calculator faults needed to keep the heading, means yaw. All set points from the thrust allocations are then forwarded to the power overload control, where it checks if there is enough power available, because if not, the power overload control will reduce the pitch and RPM demand. The reduction value is shared between the connected thrust line in such a way that the effect on the position and heading control is minimized. Very important to know, this function acts an additional to the vessel own power management system, PMS. This power overload control is limited and will only limit thruster commands to avoid a, st a stable uh, plant becoming overloaded. This function cannot prevent a potential blackout caused by generator tipping, nor uh, will it start standby generator if loads are becoming high, nor will it reduce other consumer that is all done with the power uh, management system of the vessel. And in these days, you can have the PMS and TP system from the same manufacturer and therefore the two systems are perfectly tuned for each other. Normally, the power reduction criteria are set at the lower overload level than the load reduction initiated by the vessel uh, power management system. After passing th uh, the set point through the power overload control, uh, they reach a thruster, where the thruster finally physically um, uh, thrust against the external force. There are lots of different types of thruster, like tunnel thrusters, main propellers, rudders, azimuth thruster, azimuth, azimuth pulling thruster, cycloidal thruster like a white Schneider propeller or water check thruster like a chill jet, etc. The thruster set by point uh, from the overload control also find its way into the thruster estimator. There the estimated thruster feedback is calculated using uh, an available accurate thruster prediction for each uh, type of thruster. Normally the thruster manufacturer provi provides an open water bollard characteristic graph with all information needed. For each thruster what you can expect uh, we have here some example, like a uh, tunnel thruster, we can expect uh, 11 kg per horsepower or an azimuth thruster, we can expect 13 kg per horsepower. Uh, but the thruster estimate, the main task, is to calculate the estimated feedback from the thrusters. To the thruster response and accuracy, a DP control vessel can only function if the thruster responds promptly and accurately either slow response or inaccurate setting can cause the vessel to oscillate. The following tables indicate uh, usual acceptable performance levels, like the speed from a thruster from zero to full thrust should be around 8 seconds for a small and 15 seconds for a large thruster. The azimuth is expected to turn with around uh, 2 RPMs, 2 revolution per minute. Uh, the feedback from the thruster and the uh, estimated feedback is sent to the thruster model. The thruster model has two tasks. First, the model monitors the difference between the thruster set points and feedback. Secondly, it converts the thruster feedback, like RPM, pitch, to thruster force in surge, sway and yaw and send to the vessel model. The vessel model is an estimator. In order to give a good prediction, the estimator collects all relevant data. In our example, we have the external wind force which are now compensated with the thruster force. If only wind force would act on the vessel and the model would be perfect, the vessel would be stationary. But as we all know, there are other forces like waves, currents, thruster interaction and also mo the model can never be completely accurate. Therefore, a technique called carbon filtering is used. 
If you want to know more, watch the ne next lecture. Alright, that's for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.